There's a tribe in southern India called the Irula, and they're devoted to all creatures small and pestilent. Mention rats, snakes or scorpions and the Irula can reel off all you ever wanted to know, and a lot you didn't. Certainly an unusual skill, but hardly useful. Until now. In these enlightened times, they may finally receive the recognition they deserve for doing their bit to help save the planet. The Irulas know the satisfaction of a job well done. Nothing mechanised or chemical about their work. Every rat individually caught by hand. <laughs> it has its hazards, sure, but to the Irulas, it's like a patriotic duty. We are killing so many thousands of rats. One male and female will create so many rats. Dravidamani is the manager of the Irula Snake and Rat Catchers Cooperative. That's, we are very proud. So it's a, it's a national service? Yeah, definitely. It's a national service. We are saved to the country. The Irulas understand the urgency of pest eradication. The service they offer is cheaper than pesticides and cleaner too. All they need is their iron digging bars and for the really intractable case, smoke. Lots of smoke. You, you think it's very good yourself? Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100% very good. And the customers also feel it's very, uh, very good and also uh, help for them. The Irulas are tribal people, hunter-gatherers native to India's southern states. They have no permanent settlements, no possessions. What they do share is a unique and traditional skill as animal catchers. And their particular expertise is with rats and snakes. Snake skins, in fact, were the Irulas' one source of income till the 1970s, when the Indian government banned the trade. Great for the snakes, disastrous for the Irulas. Their business was gone. I mean, just totally wiped out in one day. Romulus Whittaker, friend and advisor to the Irula tribe. Rom Whittaker's lived in India on the Coromandel coast near Madras since he was a child. An environmental campaigner, his actual job is herpetology, the study of snakes. Well, I've seen snake catchers in a lot of parts of the world and uh, none of them are quite as artful as the Irulas. And it's not so much the catching as the finding. Uh, finding those tracks, those obscure little signs on the ground that mean a snake is around is, I mean, it's like the proverbial tracker who says, hmm, bent blade of grass, tiger walked here. So you'd say, I mean, in terms of tracking and finding snakes, they're the best in the world? Oh, yeah, for sure. What kind of snake, Chucky? Uh, if the Irulas are the best in the world, Chocky is the best of the Uralas. Though from time to time, even he still takes a bite. Or two. Oh, he did it again. <laughs> Chocky's in his early 50s and, like most Uralas, can neither read nor write. But he knows the difference between a harmless snake like this one and what he's really after, something poisonous something deadly, something like a cobra. Holding the cobra by the tail is uh, slightly risky because the cobra could actually turn around and well, if it wanted to, it could actually spring up to your face level even. So you really have to keep moving your hand while you're holding onto that cobra's tail and, and watching the head of the snake the whole time. The hiss, yeah, it's very dramatic. Combined with the hood, 
something that snakes use to try and frighten you. And it usually works. Hood is uh, defensive. He's uh, frightened at that stage, and he's trying to frighten you. Hopefully, it'll make you let go of him. When he finds that it doesn't, that's the time when it could be dangerous. He won't necessarily stand up and spread his hood to strike. He'll just turn around and jump up and bite the first thing he can get a hold of. Shocky has been bitten, he said, what, 27 times? Yeah, I don't think that's accurate. It must be more. I mean, he's he can't keep track of it. He's been bitten at least eight or nine times by the big heavy snakes, some cobras and Russell's vipers. I don't think he can count them. It's lots. In times past, they would have killed these snakes and turned their skins into handbags. Now, they milk them. It's a small but lucrative business. These little drops that the Urlas sell to make anti venine are ten times more valuable than gold. The man behind the scheme, Rom Whittaker. Have the Urlas deliberately chosen the most revolting creatures to specialise in? Wait a minute now. <laughs> Snakes I have to defend here. <laughs> well, it's not a really savoury bunch of characters. Uh, there are people who specialise in digging in the ground, and these are creatures that dig in the ground. They know a lot about scorpions, which also live in the ground. That's another sort of real delectable little animal. And not so little around here. Some of the scorpions are really massive, you know, eight inches, nine inches long, this sort of thing. So they've been catching them for extracting venom also, actually, scorpions. But I take uh, exception to the word disgusting, I'd say. <laughs> I suppose even the rats have their good points, too, if you uh, take a rat's eye view of things. <laughs> The Irulas on location. Rat catching on an epic scale. actually look inside the burrows, you see why it is the Indians are so desperate to kill the rats. What you find is grain, which the rats have stolen from the harvest, taken down into their burrows and hoarded. And it's common to find up to four kilos of grain inside each burrow. That's enough to feed an average family here for a week. And you can imagine when you multiply that by the hundreds of burrows that are in each paddy field, it's an awful lot of wasted food. And I imagine for a farmer, there's something intrinsically very satisfying Just about seeing, seeing the irulas pulling out those rats. Yeah, for sure. At the end of the day, you got all this bunch of rats by the tail. It looks good, you know. Another plus is that the irulas use natural methods. Just a month before this big drive, 150 people died in northern India from eating pesticide-contaminated grain. This way, the locals are happy. Yeah, they are very happy. Because and the environmentalists are happy. But I think it's pretty well clear that if a labour-intensive, non-pesticide approach is effective, which now we're seeing it is, why shouldn't this be the approach and why shouldn't we be able to replace the entire pesticide monopoly, I should call it, because it really is. Call one by one and take all the data. Individual name, Irula name, how many rats they caught. It's a happy marriage of skills between this illiterate group of tribesmen and that special class of human being, the Indian bureaucrat. And uh, how many burrows they cleared and how many grains they caught. And the uh, name of the village you put it here. I think there is a field supervisor. Yeah, yes, field supervisor. And a field coordinator. Yeah, yes, coordinator. Um, why is it, what do they need to do? No, because the supervisor have to count the rats. Individually, they have what they are catching, how many rats they are catching, and also for uh, scientific data purpose. All this bureau babble can't disguise the fact that the times come for the massacre of the rodents. It's not pretty, it's a bit sad really, but you've got to think of the alternative, slow death by pesticide. The morning's tally, 300 rats, and they haven't died in vain. It's a case of 
throw another rat on the barbie. Halfway through the day, you, you get pretty hungry out there and you forgot to carry anything wrong to eat. So you nibble on a rat or two. It's, yeah, it's normal practice. It's not every day, but... Uh, they're good, clean little rats. They just eat rice and they're just like miniature rabbits or something. There are only so many rats even a hungry Iwala can eat. We'll see later what they'll do with the rest of them. It was only when they formed small, mobile hit squads that the Urulas really came into their own. A typical case was this poultry farm in the middle of nowhere. It was besieged by rats. They were eating the grain, they were coming up at night and actually eating the baby chickens. It was a big problem. The owner tried cats, but the rats didn't take that seriously. He tried poison bait, but it killed other animals and wasn't that effective anyway. So when you come from this part of the world and you've got this sort of crisis, who are you going to call? For just $40 a year, this poultry farm gets a regular workover. It's a relentless search. No stone is left unturned. Poultry farmer Mr. Taga Rajan is proud to provide this testimonial. So rats were your number one enemy, yes? Yes, number one enemy, poultry, for the poultry. And now? Now I'm uh, happy. The Iwalas are so busy, you have to book ahead. As we said, they can't eat them all, but help is at hand. It just so happens that the Irula's hunting ground is close to India's biggest crocodile breeding centre. Here, they have 5,000 mouths to feed. The founder and technical advisor of the crocodile centre is the intrepid Romulus Whittaker. I and probably millions, hundreds of millions of other kids have always been fascinated with dinosaur when we were all small because you start thinking, okay, humans have been around for about a million years. Crocs have been around for something like 150 million years, you know? They're the sort of ultimate survivor, the last dinosaur. What it all adds up to is an arrangement in which everyone, except the pesticide manufacturers, wins. The crocs get protected and fed. The irulas get a job to do and earn income for their tribe. The farmers save their crops from rats. Medical science gets its anti-venin, and the snakes are released unharmed. So they eradicate the rats. Yeah. And they catch the snakes. Yeah. And now I hear you're going to go after the termites. Yeah, termites also. The termites also we are going to eradicate. That also, you are expert people. So that's why we are going to do that also. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.